everybody. We hope you enjoyed last week's Life Liners and we're really glad that you're able to join with us tonight and we hope you'll enjoy all that you hear tonight. So before we start, we just want to bow our heads and pray and we'll ask God to help us tonight. Dear Lord, we do thank you for another night that we can come and hear from your word. We would pray, dear Lord, that you will really bless all who take part tonight. We pray that you'd bless through your word as we hear this amazing message and help each one who listens tonight to really hear and understand the true meaning of Christmas. We pray that you'd help us and bless us and be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, Amen. So remember last week, um, the lesson finished off with Mary and Joseph. They were married and they were setting up their little home in Nazareth. But now, several months later, um, they were getting ready to go on a journey. You see, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus, he said that um, everyone had to pay taxes to the Roman government. And that meant that everyone had to go to their own city. And Mary and Joseph would have had to go to Bethlehem. Um, now, Joseph, he was from the family of David. and Bethlehem was called the city of David. So Mary and Joseph would have had to get all their um, stuff together to go on this long journey. And they were prepared to go. Now, it wasn't going to be an easy journey. It was going to take about four or five days to get there. And uh, Joseph would have prepared... Um, all the, the stuff that they needed and he would have uh, saddled up the little donkey and Mary would have been riding on that. Now it wouldn't have been easy for Mary, it would have been uncomfortable for her. She was about to give birth to a baby and so the journey would have been um, difficult for her. But they eventually they arrived in Bethlehem. But Bethlehem was crowded with people. So many people were there for the same purpose for the taxes. And so Mary and Joseph would have tried to find somewhere to stay. And they went from place to place and there was no room. Everywhere was full. Until perhaps someone suggested, well, I have no room here. 
in the, the house or the inn, but if you want to stay in a stable. So that is where Mary and Joseph find themselves setting up um, a place to stay in a stable for the night. Now, you and I know that a stable wouldn't be the most comfortable. I certainly might have been a bit smelly as well because that's where the animals would have been staying. But I'm sure Joseph got it prepared and got it uh, made as comfortable as possible for them. Um, he would have got maybe clean straw and cl a clean hay just to, to make um, uh, it comfortable. So then during the night it happened. God's precious son came into the world as a tiny newborn baby. He was a real baby. He would have cried. He would have needed fed and cared for. He was a baby boy, but he was God. Now, you know that all babies are born wanting to go their own way, not God's way, all born as sinners. But this baby was so different. This baby was pure and sinless. Mary and Joseph would have taken the baby and wrapped him in soft clothes and laid him in the manger. How joyful and how excited they were and so uh, in awe and praise to God. But I'm sure they would have asked God to help them take care of this baby, the Son of God. Now they had no problem in naming the baby because the angel had said, call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. And you know, Jesus means saviour. Now, what does a saviour mean? Well, just imagine you're standing at the side of the road waiting to go across at the lights. But you don't want to wait for the lights to go. You see, it looks clear. So you just think you're going to just dash across the road. And you're about to step out when someone beside you just grabs and pulls you back and says, No, watch, there's a car coming. You were in danger and that person beside you was your saviour. They saved you from getting knocked down or something worse. Now, the Lord Jesus, he came to be the only saviour from sin. He became man so that he could die for the sins of men. People like you and me. He had no sin. He's, and he can save you from being separated from God. His very name means saviour and that is why Mary and Joseph called him Jesus. Now all was still and all was quiet way late on in the night. And then they heard voices. Joseph, I think someone's coming, Mary said. And she might have been a bit fearful, people coming in. And as they looked up, they could see just at the door, shepherds had just stepped inside and they were talking excitedly among themselves. This is the place. This is the baby. Look, just like the angel had said. Mary and Joseph were curious. They watched as the shepherds moved over towards the manger and they knelt down beside the baby. This was God's promised one, the one from whom the people of Israel had been waiting for years and for years. Oh, how excited they must have been as they knelt and worshipped the Son of God, this little baby that was lying in the manger. I'm sure Mary and Joseph, they would have waited and then would have questioned, oh, what about this angel? So they inquired, off the shepherds. How did you know? How did you know the baby was here? Well, we were in the fields and some of us were watching the sheep and others were taking a rest. Then all of a sudden, the sky was lit up bright and we saw this angel and the angel spoke. First, he told us not to be afraid. We knew he was from God and we were really frightened, but the angel quietened our hearts. He said, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. 
For there is born today in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. Oh. The angel said that the Lord Jesus was the Saviour. He said that you will find the baby wrapped up and lying in a manger. Then all of a sudden, the sky lit up and was filled with angels. And they were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on an earth peace, goodwill towards men. Oh, what a scene that must have been for the shepherds that night. And all of a sudden, as soon as, as quickly as the angels had appeared, they were gone. We realised that there was no reason to fear. It was because God loved us that he sent us this message from heaven. So we decided to come here to Bethlehem to look for him. And we have found him. We have found the Christ, God's promised one. What a scene that must have been. Oh, Mary and Joseph must have told the shepherds, you know, the wonderful things that took place before that night. And I'm sure the shepherds must have been amazed, amazed and their words of thankful. They, they must have been praising God and so thankful that they had seen and come and knelt down before the promised one, the Saviour. Now, when the city of Bethlehem woke the next morning, they heard news of strange happenings. And to all who would listen, the shepherds would have told their story. They told of the angels and the good news from heaven and the baby, God's promised one. Christ the Lord was born. You know, the shepherds heard that the Saviour had been born and that they came to him. And they were so glad. But what about you? You've heard he is the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can take away your sin, that cuts you and separates you from God. But you know, most people wouldn't believe it. What a strange story, they said. They shook their heads and walked away. Mary thought about all the things that had happened and wondered about the future. God's promise for the future could be counted on just like the promises of the past and she could praise and thank God for that. Do you know boys and girls don't be like the people who had heard the good news but they didn't come to the Saviour. Don't separate yourself from God but put your trust in the Saviour, the only one that has come that can save you from your sin. Just be like the shepherds. They came, they saw, they knelt, and they believed and trusted that Jesus was the promised one, the Son of God, the only one that can save you from your sin. Hello, boys and girls. Today's memory verse is found in the book of Matthew, and chapter 1 and verse 21. And here we read about the great gift that God gave to the world in giving his only son. And this is what the verse says. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now that's not hard, sure it's not. And that's an amazing verse because it tells us about the great gift that God gave to the world whenever he gave his only son. You'll remember that from last week's story, how the angel came to Mary and told her that she would have a baby boy and that he would be the saviour of the world. And that's an amazing truth, isn't it? And this is God's gift to you and to me of salvation when we receive him as our saviour. Let's try it again and we can say along with the words as they appear. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. And she 
shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. That's easy isn't it boys and girls and that's uh, God's truth that we find in his word and this time you can um, all say it out nice and loud and clear. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Are you all trying? Yes, remember, there it is. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. And you know, boys and girls, if you have asked Jesus to be your saviour, then you have received the greatest gift of all. Some of you may have mobile phones and you can even find it on your mobile phone if you type in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And there we have it again. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Well done. girls we've come to the end of lifeliners for today and we want to say thank you for joining with us thank you for taking the time um, to listen into lifeliners online today and we trust that you all have a lovely christmas you all enjoy a nice holiday from school and we'll be in touch with you in the new year to let you know what's happening regarding lifeliners thank you for joining with us and we trust that the Lord will bless each one of you as you think about the Christmas story this year. And just as we finish, we're going to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the privilege again of listening to the story of how you came into this world to be the saviour of each one of us. We thank you, Lord, for your great love. And we thank you, Lord, that you love each one of the boys and girls and that each one of them are very precious to you. We ask you, Lord, that you will watch over each one of them over the Christmas holiday. And most of all, we pray that each one of us will have room in our hearts for you in spite of all the busyness and the tinsel of Christmas. Lord, bless each one of the boys and girls, we pray, and keep your hand upon them, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. See you all soon.